In this video, I'll be creating dedicated server versions of the projects from my RPC networking demonstration and multiplayer notes videos. These projects will act as a client, so you'll want to have them ready to go. Links to both of them will be in the description. I'll begin with the RPC project. So this starting server project just has a button for starting the server, an input for the port to listen to, and another input for the maximum number of players allowed to join. These inputs will have default values in their text properties, and what they are is indicated by the placeholder text. As with peer-to-peer, -peer, the path of nodes that communicate over the network must match the paths on the client, so the scene route is called main. First, I'll create a press signal on the start button, and add the code that creates a server using the text values from the port and max player's inputs as arguments. Normally, you'd want error handling here to ensure that these are integers and within the proper ranges but I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. Then after the server starts, I'll make the menu invisible. Next, I'll add the code to spawn characters when a player joins. Even though the server won't have a local player of its own, it will still need to spawn character nodes for each client so its tree matches the client game instances. We'll start by creating a player character scene. Since only the nodes' names and locations need to match, this can be just a simple node. The player character nodes on the server will need to have RPC functions that match the clients, though they can just be left empty. I'll also set the node's name to the multiplayer authority and the ready function. In the server's main script, I'll copy over the add player character function from the original networking demonstration project. This last part that checks if the PRID is the player's unique ID can be removed, since there will never be a local player character for the server. Then I'll copy over the add newly connected player character and the add previously connected player characters functions. These functions are only called in the client. They just need to be copied over so the server's RPCs match the clients so their bodies can be left blank. I'll also add the call remote parameter for good measure. Now I'll copy over the code for the peer connected signal. Over in the original networking demonstration project, I'm going to remove the host button and code, as well as add inputs on the menu for the server's port and address, then reference those when creating the client. Now I'll test it out by launching two clients. Lastly, I'm going to make it so the server lists all the connected players. The simplest way to do this is to change the player character's type to label and set the text property to its name in the ready function. Then change the main scene's root node to a vbox container. Now when a client connects, its PID shows up on the server's UI. These will eventually go off the screen if enough people connect, so you'd probably want some scroll functionality here, but I'll get into that in a later video. We might as well give this server some control over the clients, so let's give it the ability to kick players. In the theme of keeping things simple, I'll have this occur when you click on the player character node. So again, change the player character's type, but this time to button. Then connect to press signal, and in the function's body, we'll get what's called an enet packet peer by calling get peer on the multiplayer peer with the character's multiplayer authority as the argument. We then call peer disconnect on the packet peer and queue free on the player character. So now on the server's UI, each player character node is a button you can click, and then the player is kicked. You can see on the client project here that you're getting a bunch of errors because it's trying to send RPC calls to a server it's no longer communicating with. So now for the multiplayer nodes project. The server project will start out the same. There's a menu with a port and max player's input and start button whose press signal creates a server. The lambda for the peer connected signal and the add player character function have just been copied and pasted from the original multiplayer nodes project. But now the create server function takes its arguments from the input nodes and the add player character function is not called when the server is started. And just a side note, the degree to rad functions have been renamed. They're now deg underscore to underscore rad. So make sure to update those in the original project. There's also a player character scene in here. It's just a simple node for now. Now let's start by adding a multiplayer spawner on the server, set its spawn path to the root node of the main scene, and add the player character scene to the auto spawn list. And that's pretty much all you need to make this work. You'll just get a couple errors on the server because the character nodes here don't have multiplayer synchronizers. To fix this, add a synchronizer, attach a script, and set the synchronizer's multiplayer authority to the character's name converted to an integer. Then attach a script to the synchronizer and add the position and Y rotation variables that are being synced. You don't need setters and getters like you do in the original project because these are just here so that the server and client match. But don't forget to add these properties in the replication interface. Now we can run the server and a couple clients again, and everything works and we're not getting any errors. So dedicated servers are often run from the command line without graphic user interfaces and sometimes hosted on machines running Linux to save memory. I'll cover this in the next video. Hopefully this was helpful and thanks for watching.